Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back and welcome to our demo and review of the 2015 Les Paul Standard Pro Plus Top. It has Pro Bucker 2 and Pro Bucker 3 pickups in it. Now, 2015, it's a brand new guitar, but it's brand new old stock. We'll talk about that later. For now, let's have a little bit of fun. So I am plugged into my Marshall stack, uh, 15 watt amp, and we're just going to use its own built-in stuff. So. Let's have some fun.
So I, I actually like the, uh, the finish on this with the cherry burst. It's actually quite nice. It'd probably be nicer if it was like a matte finish, but I'm still okay with this. I kind of like it. Um, like the knobs too. They, they did pick some nice um, color choices as far as, you know, pick guard and, you know, the, the poker chip and all that. Um, the, the goldish colored knobs go well in the, in the background here. So it, it actually looks pretty nice. Um, overall, very good. We do have Grover tuners on this thing as well. So we have some quality in this thing. Um, as far as where it's made, your guess is as good as mine. That particular sticker is actually missing. But, of course, if you look at the serial number, you'll find it's made in China. Ta-da! Anyways, so really, um, currently what they're asking for this thing is about $6.99, right? Uh, that's Canadian. And that's not a bad price overall. It's not a bad price. Um, it's got a slim uh, 60s tight neck, so it's not like a fat 50s like on my gold top. So I kind of like the nice slim neck on it. It's very fast, easy to get up and down the fretboard with no real issues. The neck really isn't sticky at all. Of course, I don't sweat anyways, no matter how long I'm playing. My hands are never going to have that issue, where a lot of people do. Um, which, hey, it happens, right? But um, as far as tuning stability goes, especially after doing all that, let's take a quick look. That's good. 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 Hey, typical Epiphone tuning stability. Stays in tune really well. The one thing I really do appreciate um, more with Epiphones than I do with the Gibsons is the tuning stability. The, the back rake on the, on the headstock is not as bad. It's actually far less. And of course, the headstock design pushes the DNG in a lot closer, so you do have much better stability and Epiphone knows actually how to cut nut slots properly, which is something I find with the majority of Gibsons uh, that I've played, and plus the one I currently own, um, they really don't do that great of a job at the factory cutting the nut slots. You know, your, your strings should be absolutely as, as level as possible to the slot. Like they shouldn't be protruding upward, or if they are, so minor amount, okay? Like very minor, okay? Um, but otherwise they should be sitting absolutely flush. And Epiphone is really good at doing that. Um, every, every Epiphone guitar I've owned and the ones I currently own, they're all great. Even my acoustic is actually surprisingly really good. Um, so, because I have the J200. But uh, the action is set pretty low on this thing, which I like. I like a low action. Um, I've never been really that fussy with these bridges um, because they have the little clip wire. But they do make it easy that if you do have an intonation issue where you're running out of room, you can take the little spring clip off, flip your saddle that you need to, or flip whatever amount you need and then put it all back together like about that quick. Unlike Gibson, it's like, <laughs> just take it off and flip it around, it's less hassle. Oh wait, you can't do that once the slots are cut into the saddles. So that makes it a lot harder job to do. But um, anyways, Epiphone, yeah, there, there's some good points to these type of uh, saddles on the Epiphone, certainly. Uh, even Gretsch actually uses them too. But um, for a 2015, um, I'm kind of really impressed with it. To be honest, it's got a nice tight connection um, for the input jack, uh, well, output jack. Um, you know, I, I've never been fussy about this whole plastic thing up and around here. Um, if I do decide to get this thing on Gibson Month, it's, it's going to get some mods, but this is one of those guitars where it's not likely going to see any goldification. Um, I'm quite actually, I think it's well balanced with its um, amount of silver tone and just a delicate amount of gold in these knobs. Um, I think it, it's really nice and it's something I, I think I'd, I would just leave alone. Even the tuners, I'm not a fussy, you know, I, I really don't like the kidney uh, bean tuners or kidney stone tuners, whatever you want to call them, kidney tuners. Um, but you can always change those out just to take off the screw, pop it off, put on what you want. I'm a more traditionalist when it comes to, to Les Pauls. Um, so that's kind of my thing. That's why I usually convert everything over to the, you know, the other style. But uh, tulips. 
Uh, so anyhow, uh, overall, I think it's a really nice guitar. It plays very nice. Uh, the frets are very nice. Bound fretboard too. Um, no razor blade edging going on here. I can grip this all I want and run my hand and, you know, it's smooth. I mean, Epiphone, believe it or not, a lot of people will tell you they, they sometimes, well, actually a lot of times, do much better even fret work, let alone build work, than Gibson does. Yeah, Gibson owns Epiphone. Go figure, right? But is a Les Paul from Epiphone a real Les Paul? Yes, it is. And that is information you can actually find and be backed up all over the internet that these are actual real Les Pauls. You know, and Gibson owns Epiphone, and therefore, hey, it's still a Gibson product. Have you seen the Inspired by Gibson series from Epiphone as well? There you go. Um, so, check out your local Long McQuaid if you live in Canada. Um, I don't know if you'll find another 2015 hanging on the wall. Um, but certainly take a look. Take a quick look at the serial number. Go to the serial number tracker online even while you're in the store and you can find out the exact model year. Because like I said, Epiphone seems to be reusing their SKUs once again, which throws things off, you know. So it's kind of like, Because even the pickups were different on the 2018 than they were on this one uh, from what I found. So it was kind of like, uh, what are we really dealing with here? Now we know? Cool. Um, now, like I said, I'm not 100% if I'm going to buy this on Gibson Month, but... We'll see. I might. It's very tempting. Um, you know, I really would like a white guitar, though. That's the thing. I really do want a white guitar. But um, anyhow, so there you have it. Now, where do we put the rankings on this thing? Well, you know, it's the whole thing of Gibsons have muddy pickups. Epiphones have some mud in their pickups, too. You can thin them out. And you can, you know, all of that. Some A lot of that mud sound you hear is really not so much the pickups as your amp or maybe it's the speakers on your amp. You know, I'm running a Marshall here with uh, two 10-inch cabs. And, you know, they can sound a little bit on the moofy side or maybe not so much. Depends on the pickups. Depends on the settings on the amp, too. Uh, how you do things. You can clean up that if you don't like a lot of mud in a humbucker, you know, or just adjust heights. You could do that too, right? Clean them up a little bit more or whatever. Um, but I do like as far as a factory setup goes, this thing actually is quite nice. Um, I got a bit of delay and reverb turned on on this thing. And I like that throaty sound, you know, it's kind of like... That slim neck really helps you with your stretch uh, more than what a fatter neck does. But hey, you know what? Some people like a fatter neck. Um, I'm not too fussy either way uh, these days. Um, there's a bit of a fat neck on my 50s gold top, and it's nice. I like it. Slimmer neck, though, makes it a lot easier for me to get more stretch, too. Um, but either way, I'm, I'm okay with either side of the fence. Now, um, I, I would say as far as, you know, these whole wonderful star ratings that everybody wants, um, where would I actually slam this thing for? Um, well, I, I'd probably say somewhere around, I, I guess I'd give it a four and a half. You know, I mean, it's, it's definitely not perfect, that's for sure. Um, you know, I'm not going to pick on the fact that, you know, Epiphone, you know, reuses their SKUs and this thing came up as a 2018 and that threw me off when I first looked at the serial number. Um, turns out it's 2015, but I'm not going to pick on that. But I am going to pick on the fact that it is definitely not perfect, that's for sure. Um, you know, and um, as far as everything else goes, I don't have any real issues. You know, uh, the coil tappers work great. Um, you know, the setup is nice on this thing. It's nice and low. You know, I like that. The fret work, everything else is good on it. The finish is, ex is exceedingly great. You know, I mean, it's very nice. Um, Quality tuners, you know, I mean just a set of Grover tuners like this will set you back like a hundred bucks in Canada You know, so you've got decent tuners at least um, And easy to swap out too. So if you wanted higher-end tuners, these are already pre-drilled for your 10 millimeter holes uh, So it's just a matter of take these off slam on another set that you want on there. 
kind of your thing, right? Um, the nut work is done. It's done very nice, so they, they never messed that up at all. It's just fine. Tuning stability, very good. Um, definitely got to give it that too. So there's not really a lot of bone picking uh, I could do on this thing, you know, as far as saying, you know, uh, bad points, right? Um, but, uh, and they did a great job with the output jack. I mean, it's nice, tight, secure, which you need. Uh, unlike uh, my Les Paul, I had to change it because Gibson put in one of those modular style things and it's like my wireless could easily just fall right out, you know? It's like, uh, so I did change that myself. Um, but anyway, for a standard Pro Plus top, I'm actually really impressed with this thing. And I think you probably would be too. Um, do let me know in the comments below what you think of this thing. Like, let me give you some close-ups here. So this is what they call a cherry sunburst. And uh, that's actually really nice. And then, of course, you've got your backside. You know, so this thing is made out of mahogany, of course. And, you know, you'd have your maple top on there, you know. It's a really nice guitar, you know, so really can't really complain about it, you know, to be honest. I, I do need a better strap for it, though, if I do decide to, to buy this on Gibson Month. I'm going to have to get a strap for it. But we'll see if I buy it or not. You'll know, because I'll definitely tell you when Gibson Month rolls around. I'll be like, here's what I bought today <laughs> on Gibson Month. So um, do check them out. Now, if you don't live in Canada, of course, you have many stores, you know, available to you everywhere in the U.S. or U.K. or whatever country you happen to live in. Um, a lot of choices out there. This is the left-handed version as well. Um, and there's not supposed to be any price difference between left and right-handed when it comes to Gibson or Epiphone. I have not seen any myself, but if you do find that that happens in your country, then I would probably have a talk with the manager because they're supposed to be equally the same. <coughs> but um, don't knock Epiphone. Epiphone does make some exceedingly great products. Um, you know, I have no issues. Um, so I, I like them. But um, I also like my Gibson and other brands. Anyways, in the meantime, thanks so much for watching, guys. Stay tuned for more. Um, I may do some more stuff with this thing while I have it. Um, I just don't know how long I'm going to have it for because we don't know when I'll get my Gibson back. Um, but um, however long it is here for, we're definitely going to do some more videos with this thing at least being played. Um, we'll see uh, what we can pull off because there's some sounds in this thing, like especially on the uh, distortion. You know, I like that, you know, which is a sound that I don't tend to get out of my 50s gold top. That's another thing to consider if you're looking for different tones and you can't dial them in but just but go buy another guitar right you know why change pickups just go buy another guitar anyway see ya